broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne. This is Wilms Front, brought to you by the Unshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Hello everyone and welcome to this Friday night edition of Wilms Front. It is the 8th of November 2019 at 7 p.m. here in Melbourne. We are live on the Tim Wilms YouTube channel and also live on Entropy, the YouTube enhanced software. Hang on, we're off the screen here. Yeah, we'll have it back. Entropy, uh, you can uh, send us a question uh, throughout the show and you can also send us through a super chat uh, uh, which supports the production of the show. Now, obviously I've got a very special guest with me uh, for tonight, Richard Wollstonecroft, the you, uh, director, organizer of the Melbourne Underground Film Festival. Indeed. Uh, but I'll start the show by uh, talking about the, the latest update in the, the Groper War, which is the lieutenant, of course, is Nick uh, Fentes of uh, the Australia First uh, show, which is 8 p.m. Eastern uh, US time every night. He goes for, for two hours, just him uh, solo. And yeah, he, he just talks about uh, what the what the strategy is in the in the Groper war, and he gets endless uh, super chats throughout the the evening. They've turned into basically the super chatters pitch questions to him, and he gives his assessment whether it's a productive question uh, to uh, Charlie Kirk or Turning Point USA or other conservative ink uh, groups, and he gives feedback about whether it will be enough to get uh, normies on side. That's that's always the test. Uh, but uh, he described that uh, tonight uh, Ben Shapiro, uh, of course, he is the, the editor of the, the Daily Wire. He's known for those Ben Shapiro destroys so-and-so liberals or progressives on, on this issue. He was giving a talk at, at Stanford uh, University, which I believe was organized by the Young America's Foundation. And of course, the the, uh, the Groypers, uh, they were t uh, well, Nick Fentes said, uh, Ben Shapiro is our first uh, boss, which boss ref refers to in video game culture when you, uh, re <laughs> when you reach a, 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 a certain end segment of the game you, there's one scary monster <laughs> called the the ben boss. shapiro yes yeah, so he's a scary monster definitely definitely definite plant well ben the, shapiro uh, he preempted uh that the gropers uh would uh, attack and so dedicated uh, 45 minutes of his address to denouncing Nick Fentes went over his old Facebook post, post on the alt-right. He and the Young uh, America's Foundation uh, refute that they uh, had plants in the audience to ask questions, that they screened questions, said, we still believe in free speech. It's only the, the far left and the alt-right that don't believe in, in free speech. And, well, they said free speech and uh, civility because, of course, uh, they accuse Nick Fantas and America First of being disingenuous. Even though all their questions, they can be answered, mm -hmm. they're all asked in good faith. There's never any... May I ask a question? Who are you asking it to? You! Um, you know, I, I, obviously, uh, Nick Fantas is a bit of a new figure to me. I, I'd seen him kind of grow. Um, obviously, um, the new right, or you know, whatever you want to call it, I guess it was called to some extent the alt-right, I mean, you know, um, with the kind of disaster of Richard Spencer's leadership, um, you know, which seemed to, you know, dr attempted to drag it towards the Daily Stormer end of things, um, you know, it was a huge disaster because obviously, um, you know, the alt-right was considered almost a kind of um, the intellectual avant-garde or the intellectual online support of, of Trump and Brexit and that kind of thing. And um, for someone who would consider themselves the leader of that movement to try and drag it to the most radical end of, of the far right is, is, was one of the most incredibly stupid things I think I've seen in contemporary politics in recent years. Obviously, the thing to do if you were a kind of leader within the movement was to move it more centre, to move it more populist along the lines of, um, you know, populist nationalism and, you know, the more moderate figures within the new right, even embracing something, you know, like a kind of centre um, right liberalism of, or something like uh, Jordan Peterson. That was clearly the thing to do. But, you know, he, he, he went the opposite way. You know, well, you know, he's got his reasons for that. Um, unless he's an agent and is doing it deliberately to sabotage the movement. He's probably just doing it because, I don't know, he's too radical or something. So I think, you know, we need to find leaders uh, um, who are, um, you know, at least can talk with liberals and can talk with left-wingers without, you know, um, you know, having a brain aneurysm or, or whatever. So um, a groper, what is that? That's what I wanted to... Yes, it's named after a pose by Pepe the Frog, who's got a cup of coffee and sitting like this very... Can this uh, be a code if we do this? Smugly, yes. <laughs> so, uh, 
and well, it's also called the the Zuma army as well. Which, Why? Which of course uh, stands. It, it combines the the term Generation Z with uh, Boomer because uh, well, that's Zuma. that's become a a meme uh, of the week because there was a New Zealand okay, uh, politician who said, "Okay, Boomer." And now that's so, ageism. You know what I mean? And it also goes against the kind of traditional wisdom of respect your elders, you know what I mean? Which was something I think we were taught growing up in the 70s and 80s, which is, of course, which is all the, all the millennials who are just absolute fucking brat. All the fucking, it's like, whatever, okay. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Well, you've got to, people watching this will see your hair's a bit grey. So yeah. what generation I are, am, you, are you part of? Remember, you can't, I am. I you, know, you can't exactly. identify as generational no, fluid. I, know. Or, I was born in 1969. I am Generation X, baby. We are the fuck you generation. We are the generation that's going to change everything. As soon as we get rid of uh, the baby boomers completely, um, we are going to take over everything and we're going to change the face of this planet. Um, Gen X... Here's a little quote, you know, it's like, okay. Gen X is going to X you. There you go. This is a little new meme. You can that was a band. Uh, Billy Idol was the singer. We don't mean that. I don't know why we're called Gen X. We are called Gen X. But to me, it's like we're the great mystery. What are we going to do when we fully assume power and take over? Because eventually the baby boomers who have been in charge for a long time are going to be dead. I mean, obviously, you know, we all have a bit of resentment towards that generation. And we see that there is uh, they made a lot of errors. So, uh, and I do think that you know gen x is, is cynical you know and um you know um whereas maybe baby boomers are very idealist and, and and um kind of the millennials are kind of obnoxious brats and we're in the middle going uh, you know so let's just um you know bring common sense back a little bit you know i think i'm generation y i was born in in 89 i'm 89. about to turn uh 30 uh this month so it's well, a big uh milestone so obviously also you're a millennial you're millennial or i just came up with something <laughs> then uh, generation wine uh, because wine. well it's because the the thing is the reason why a lot of millennials feel entitled is because their boomer parents taught them that prosperity was going to last for forever and that it was all on a plate for you that yeah, the world bullshit. was your oyster yeah and that which, was a giant you know this is why i mean you know this is why yeah a lot of gen x's have realized that that you know, I mean, you know, we were essentially, we, we ran the world, you know what I mean? And uh, now we're in a position where we're about to lose everything. So, I mean, what do you want to do? I mean, do you want to be the person who holds the whip or do you want to be the person under it? I can assure you it's better to hold it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, it's like it's better to have the power than be someone crushed by it. I mean, you know, if the left want to reduce everything to a kind of zero sum game of, you know, uh, oppressor and oppressed, we want to be the oppressor. You know what I mean? Who are we kidding? You know what I mean? Like, you want to have the power. Trust me. Um, you know, and believe me, the left know that. They, and they have already, whenever they have made their essentially progressive politics has become more powerful, they have become oppressors. I mean, this is the whole game, you know? So, and in the sense that there's politics to, to an extent is almost proven by how horrible they are when they take over. Yes, generational warfare, it's, it's reaching its peak, I think. It is, yeah. I mean, you know, I think the baby boomers were kind of, I think the best generation was my grandfather's generation who fought in um, World War II and stuff. That was a very solid generation. That was the, the greatest generation. Greatest generation. And I think they were pretty good. Even though they were incredibly Silent generation. Oriented. That was the one before. The silent generation. Mm. Isn't that strange? Uh, it's probably all a bunch of bullshit. I mean, going back and who can remember what was before that? But like, obviously, you have historical eras. Like I did a bit of oh, go ahead, you uh, research ooh, on it ooh. because of because if you yeah you can go back and there's a, a name for every generation going back two hundred years. Is that right? Yes. Okay. What was the first one? First one. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah you look into that. Who, who was the? What was the first generation? Was it the? Did it come with the French Revolution? It sounds about two hundred years ago, doesn't it? Mm. The created uh, generation. The created generation. I don't know. But, you know what, what about the ancient Greeks and Romans? Didn't they have generations? Maybe. Maybe somebody needs to go through all No one can fucking remember it. Like, no one will remember us. A generational <laughs> ologist. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's just um, you know, the desire to label and, um, you know. So Nick Fentes, he's yes, uh, declaring uh, tonight a victory because they, they managed to get Ben Shapiro to spend 40, 45 minutes uh, denouncing them. So it, it's definitely the advance has, has kept going now. And it's interesting because his show, Nick Fentes, is on around about midday Australian time. It's must-watch must, must watch, uh, YouTube 
TV. I yes. don't normally encourage people to watch other mm -hmm. programs, but you should definitely. I've never watch seen that. one of his broadcasts. So uh, under your instructions, you're, you're you're missing out big time. Uh, obviously, no. He seems interesting. You know, I'll take a listen to him. Um, he seems to be getting a lot of attention. So any figure like that within the new writer, I like mm. to have a listen to. See what they're saying. But his super chatters now. They're they're putting him on notice. Like, don't you dare ever betray stab us in the back sell out you know we've put a lot of uh trust and faith with you so do not uh, betray us in in any form and he's what do you like, mean like what, what, what who, who's telling him to do that when you super chat you mean the audience yes mm -hmm. the who are pledging was pledging to to give him money i'm not oh, sure you know how what a super chat is sure you tell me Oh, super chat! It's when somebody who's watching a YouTube live they yes. they pledge a, a certain amount of money, and you read out their super chat on the air. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, send us money, and we'll um, you know deliver the goods. Yeah, this channel hasn't got a uh, thousand subscribers yet, so we're not YouTube monetized. Oh, so that's why sure. I use Entropy, uh, as I said at the introduction, the YouTube sure. enhanced uh, software. So I'll put the link in. Then again, mm -hmm. you can only access it via desktop, and I recommend that you keep the uh, YouTube window open because for some reason the stream doesn't work in uh, Entropy. Uh -huh. But head over there anyway, have multiple tabs on is what I'd recommend. And you probably also noticed that uh, I've got a new uh, YouTube uh, picture and uh, cover photo. Uh, so that was uh, taken, that uh, professional uh, photo by Morgan Munro. Uh, wonderful producer and yes, like yes. your longtime producer he's been producing the yes for since the start mm. except for tonight's episodes and the, the the touch-ups were done by by james fox higgins of the the rational rise oh uh, excellent team team teamwork yes. that's what it's all about unity solidarity you right mm. you know not all mm. this division and stuff we don't all have to agree i mean you know like on every single issue if you're of a basic new right that's why i like the term new right over anything because it's a broad it's a broad church you know what I mean? That's why that, uh, I just provided the pretty face. That's all I did. Oh, I see. <laughs> but before we get into the the meat uh, of tonight, another update, uh, uh -huh. which is uh, ABC's Q and A uh, Monday night abomination. I've never seen anything like it. It was like they've been criticised for being too radically left, and they think, how could we make it even more ridiculously left? And they succeed. You got to give it to them, really, for like. You know, being the, as ridiculous as they could possibly be. Well, it's, it's, it wasn't ridiculous. It wasn't idiotic, moronic. It was dangerous because Mona Ethelway, the Egyptian-American who, who's written the book, The, the Seven Deadly Sins for, for Women and Girls, she, she, she'd she wrote in her book how many, imagine if we declared war on the, the patriarchy, how many men uh, should we kill? And she proposes <laughs> I know up that. to... A million. I agree that kind of rhetoric is, is very disturbing and it's 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 terrorist rhetoric and it's coming from the ABC um, on one of their major TV shows. And you know, I agree it's dangerous and I agree with the condemnation, but are you really worried by that stupid woman with, with red hair? I mean, have you seen it? I mean, this is why but, I, I find yeah. it hilarious when the left begin to talk like this. Because I say, listen, if there's ever a fight between the right and the left, it would last about a week and the right, they, you know, like that would be it. You know, it's ridiculous. Like the right has nothing to fear essentially physically. I mean, apart from, you know, the odd tough guy with an antifa who might try and clock somebody or whatever, like, you know, occasionally they'll have a big guy who'll be part of their, um, whatever, but like any kind of actual organized resistance between left, I mean, give me a fucking break. The idea that they talk this way is incredibly stupid because it, it would justify a right wing reaction where the right wing began to talk this way. And I, I promote nonviolence and it's fucking ridiculous. What do you think, Tim? Well, the reason why uh, a lot of people, including myself, uh, are so disturbed by this is well given with, that we had the the i mark marxist mm -hmm. uh, protests the week before which were violent but they called it civil disobedience unbelievable so this is just a week after in when leftists uh, especially antifa protests are getting more and more aggressive they are and yeah. violent i think they are the, real the abc doesn't need to they should be declared a terrorist further group. and can you imagine if somebody non-left said Oh, that exactly. On the exactly. ABC, like no. the, the houses, the, 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 yeah, they would have the police. Yeah, would would come. kick them in. You know exactly, and it's it's ridiculous that the left is allowed such a long lead because you know there's a constant look. And it's very simple to think about too. There are there are sides of both the far left and the far right where it can go too far, and this is a point that Jordan Peterson constantly makes. And the left is doing that all the time now. It's going too far, and not only I mean you know 
if it was just going too far and being ignored, or when it went too far, people pointed it out and said, oh, tut, tut, that would be okay. Because, you know, I, there is occasionally a left-wing radical idiot around, but, like, it's the fact that it's being encouraged and broadcast from the ABC with their consent, as if they approve of it, that is, I don't know where we're at. I mean, I, I, I can't switch on the ABC now. I mean, I do constantly do it, because sometimes I like, I don't know, maybe I like being annoyed or something, but, like, Every time I switch it on, it's just, it's some new left agenda being pushed down my throat. Sometimes ABC's 7.30 and Four Corners program sure. does do some yeah, okay. good work. Like, for example, I Four Corners have done, I think, about five episodes now on Chinese Communist Party interference. Exactly. In Four Corners Australia. had always been solid, generally. Um, you know, sometimes you, you can tell when a show is being ideological and when it isn't. And when it isn't, it's generally solid. And when it is being ideological, well, it's just part of the rest of the bullshits on the ABC. And look, I've always loved the ABC, really, and I think it's a national tragedy that the network does not resent the demographics of the country, that at least 50% of Australians are, are conservative. I mean, if they were to have a show like Quanda and then to have a, a kind of another talk show where it was more right-wing focused, I would have no problem with Quanda, and they could say whatever they fucking like, including what just happened, because we would be able to do the same thing. I mean, you know, but the fact that there is no balance or no attempted balance, I mean, just one show, one conservative show on the ABC, I mean, they have so many... You know, and that awful one, the drum, where it's just a bunch yeah, of Yeah, they should get rid of all the oh. panel opinion programs. Have you ever tried the, to watch that? Yeah, the drum is like basically your nails pulled out with fucking daily uh, Q&A without the oh. audience. It's a bunch of left-wing assholes and then someone from the Liberal Party, oh, well, who's like the more liberal end they, of the Liberal. They normally just get uh, somebody, most common uh, right-wing guest on the drum is someone from the institute of public affairs oh yeah yeah some but, some you know but capitalist that's, that, thing that's, thing. that's all too, that's even too much for the abc viewers it's like oh you're uh you're capitulating to the far right to have somebody from the the ipa on to to spread all of this uh, i offer myself to the drum you know i'll do it for the people you know i'll go on there and offer a new right perspective and i'll wear my you know um you know uh kind of vaguely uh, Chairman Mao kind of suits and stuff, and that'll confuse them. And, um, you know, like, you know, we need to, I mean, uh, look, I mean, this is the reason they don't allow it. They don't wish to uh, allow the discussion. They don't want to open the Overton window, you know what I mean? Because they're worried about it. But it's the very fact that they want to keep it closed, and that's why it's opening so wide. Because, you know, there's just so much that we need to talk about to save our countries that it's just simply not being discussed, um, you know, on shows like the ABC. And, I mean, not only that, they have this kind of, this poison bunch of, it was, it was like a kind of a witch's meeting. I mean, I, I mean, I know that kind of type of um, intellectual feminist, you know, but that was just off the charts. I'd never seen anything like it, you know. Yeah, I'd had a good Monday, <laughs> and because uh, Paul Murray on Sky News, he's, beco he's become too much of a cuck server. Yeah. I mean, like, they're basically sucking up to Scott Morrison so he can get the exclusive with Donald Trump to ask yeah, yeah. him uh, what's his favourite food at the 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 White House. Mm -hmm. uh, that that was quite cringe. So I switched over to Q and A. Maybe there'll be a bit more fireworks there. Yeah. Uh, but it was five hardcore militant feminists and Fran Kelly, who is the worst at the ABC. She is currently the host of Insiders. Uh, their, their Sunday morning panel show because Barry Cassidy is retired but David Spears is not starting until the, the next year. And mm -hmm. her questions to, to coalition ministers, she always paints w w uh, their, their policies in the worst possible light. She always comes at it from oh, yeah. a negative angle. Like, for example, she was asking, I think it was maybe Maurice Payne, and it's like, oh, we're sucking up to America by going into the, the Strait of Hormuz uh, oh, uh, okay. for freedom of navigation. Uh, oh, but we're, we haven't, uh, we support the Iran deal, but the, the US doesn't. We're in conflict where we're like, you've literally swi switched your position mm -hmm. in the <laughs> same program just to bash the coalition. It, yeah, and that awful show, too, that really irritates me. What's the name of that show? It's like a political show where two guys attack Trump. It's like uh, Planet America. Oh, that's Planet on, America. That's on Friday night. You know, that like graveyard you know, one. Really, you know, I mean, you know, that is unbelievable. And uh, like one of the guys, Planet like, ABC, it should be called. Yeah, like it's just anti-Trump. It's it's like fuck off, man. Like you know, like 
if it wasn't, I mean, if, if, if it occasionally was funny or actually had, had a positive story about Trump, they could get away with it being constantly negative. But it's just, it's just endlessly negative. And it's that, that chump from the, is it the Chasers or whatever, and some other idiots. I mean, how do these people even get on television? These people have no personality. These people can't talk. They have no ideas. They recycle left-wing um, talking points. And it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous and boring. And the Australian public, they don't want to watch that rubbish. Well, I've got in the ch live chat again tonight, uh, Paula, you uh, Falzoni, because uh, was Fat Pizza's uh, coming back, I think, oh, I next month on uh, 7, mate, which uh, we, we shall see if uh, 2019 can, can handle uh, that type of politically incorrect humour, because... Uh, which show is, is it, sorry? Fat Pizza. Oh, I love Fat Pizza. I love that show. And uh, I've met a few people... Um... Um, from who who are cast on on that show and the house has one uh, on independent film I worked on and um, they're all great and I think he's a really great filmmaker. What's the name of the guy who makes uh, it? Paulie Fennick. He's fantastic. I love that guy and um, he's, he's very politically incorrect and it's hilarious it's and uh, like it just that. shows the full disaster of multiculturalism in in a very hilarious way and it's very transgressive that show because it does show everything as just how. It's how truly ugly and stupid it all is. Like, it, from a political perspective, it's incredibly red-pilled. Go ahead. The reason why it works is because uh, Paulie is an equal opportunity hate offender. Yeah, yes, yeah. has a go at everybody. Yeah, I've always Aussies, liked that saying, I hate everybody equally. You know, Aussies, I'm, lebs, wogs, yeah, they're all gays, assholes. feminists. Everyone's an arsehole. Yes. Mean, fair enough, right? And so from a human perspective, if you, it's really... if you get... A, if you're from one of those groups and get offended by it, then you've mm. basically failed the comedy test because exactly. that's the thing with comedy today. It's just, oh, look at those conservative dickheads. Ha, ha, ha. And that's the whole routine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And of course, then there's just the experimental comedy of uh, Hannah uh, Gatsby and uh, Who's Demi Who's the one who looks like a man? Oh, Demi Lada. Demi Lada's oh, really she's unbelievable. Small, small one. She's the one Dad's Google history. Oh, that was unbelievably bad. That yeah. was the most unfunny thing I think I've ever seen. Like, actually, though, it was so unfunny that it was maybe funny. You know what I mean? Like, it was the worst comedy performance I think I've ever seen. That I thought, maybe, is this some kind of genius? Because I, I said, what the fuck is this? I couldn't believe who I posted about that on the ABC. I said, actually, ABC Comedy, I think, is like a thing. Oh. Yes, it's a, it's consumer fraud, that channel. Basically, the ACCC should investigate that because it's not... There's no comedy, comedy. there. Because I think that's what Trump, he wants to uh, sue CNN for consumer fraud for saying that they're a... Not on a news channel, but the most trusted source in news. Yeah, and there's been that, there's extraordinary leaks where, like, that Zucker guy is just giving them orders, and, like, the very people who work at CNN are complaining about being bullied around by these globalist um, arseholes. And, I mean, and many of these people are actual left-wingers, or at least left-orientated, who would just like to give Trump a vaguely, vaguely uh, fairer hearing and um, actually present news. I mean, it was extraordinary. What's going on is extraordinary. And one of the great things about Trump is that he seems to be able to make his enemies reveal themselves and to behave in a way that's so obnoxious that it becomes intolerable to almost everybody. Uh, well, I think the Trump presidency has its biggest test when uh, Don Jr. is due to take the stage with uh, Charlie Kirk from Turning Point USA. We shall see how sure. that is handled. But he did a very good job this week, Don Jr. Um, I always compare the Trump family to the uh, Michael Corleone family. He's like the sunny Corleone, you know, the kind of like the oldest son who's kind of a hothead, you know what I mean? They and, used to call him, uh, well, the news call him Fredo. No, no, I think Fredo is Kushner. He needs to be taken Well, out. he's not. Fredo right? needs a, a, a boat ride, if you know what I mean. Um, Kushner needs a boat ride. But uh, I was going to say, um, yeah, I mean, he, he's clearly the global, Kushner's clearly the global's plan. Within the Trump family, they placed someone there, just in case Trump did do what he said he was always going to do, is run for president. Just so they had someone there who could sabotage the Trump thing from within. Obviously, that's what uh, Kushner is there to do. And obviously, that's why occasionally I think Trump makes maybe the odd-off decision because he's been listening to his son-in-law. Because, you know, he loves his daughter, Ivanka, his daddy's girl, you know. There's nothing Ivanka doesn't want, that, that Trump doesn't want to give her. So this, this is a perfect position for a little agent to sit. And what we're talking about, we're talking about Don Jr. He did a great thing. He went on that show, The View. Did you see that this week? Yeah. And um, that was extraordinary. Um, and, you know, they, they were, you know, like ha having a go at him uh, about his, you know, Trump and the Ukraine crisis and everything. And he says, hang on a minute, you know, like you want to go about whistleblowers. I mean, how come you, your, your own channel is covering up the whistleblower about Epstein? And obviously, you know, 
Uh, and it was extraordinary. He named it all on the view, and you could just see the like their jaws dropping, you know, because you could even see some of them kind of agreeing with it. And then Whoopi Go Goldberg goes into oh, oh, uh, uh, Joy you know. Bayer is uh, the worst. She's the the, 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 the the redhead one. She was having a go at uh, two scabbard. But why have you been on Tucker Carlson so much? Why did these right wing Republicans like you so much? Did you know if you watch the view, and then you know, if we die and go to another world, like the time you spent watching the view is considered time. I'm in purgatory so you know like uh, it's interesting that megan mccain who is obviously john mccain's daughter she oh. is actually the best one even despite who her father was yeah you know i mean she you know um mccain was you know a very evil bastard and is uh well you know no doubt um supping with the devil as we speak but um um you know yeah i mean look you know a lot of these um daughters of globalists have clearly been through a lot and i think a lot of them are red pilled by it because they you know they would have had awful fathers and uh you know even though they often might repeat the general message of, of their, their parents that they're they're definitely more nuanced perhaps and uh, at least open to uh you know seeing things from a different light maybe i don't know now i know paulie uh, in the in the chat you said that it was on tuesday at premiere this week fat pizza can you either if you're feeling generous uh, send through a super chat or just even put it in the questions a bit let's in, have one of these in, super in, chats in, in, in entropy know, uh to let us know exactly what time and what day it's on seven mate come on if you're on here to, yes. to promote fat pizza give us the exact details yes, and we'll, we'll talk fat pizza some more and we'll you know we'll give you some free promos here let's have a super chat going on son yes but going back to because what we, still, we, we still haven't got to the, <laughs> the, the the actual uh guts of the program <laughs> which one uh yes q a so uh, oh, yeah. mona has said Oh, it, it was, it's, it, it, obviously I'm not going to do that. It, it was just, uh, it, it was just exaggeration, but I want people to not uh, get, get upset about what I say, but about real, uh, gendered, uh, violence. Well, if you're worried about gender violence, how about you not incite any? That'd be a, hmm. that'd be a good start. Yeah. I and mean, the, the ABC managing director, uh, David Anderson, he said that the the ABC is investigating whether it met uh, editorial standards. I think it should be investigated whether it uh, broke the the law. Absolutely, and obviously the reason they sent um, you know uh, Ida Butros down to the ABC is because she's vaguely conservative and used to work for um, uh, Kerry Packer, um, and they thought well maybe she'll have a um, a kind of uh, an influence on the ABC that's just a little bit more moderate and obviously you know I mean I imagine that's what her intention is too but these people when you meet them you know what I mean like, I've met many left-wingers of this persuasion they, they're very uh, they, they kind of bully you into their own perspective you know like you, you have to feel like oh you're going along with it ah oh, you know I mean I've even found myself sometimes at dinner parties I mean normally I destroy them and if I'm not in such a confrontational mood that happens once or twice a year oh okay whatever you know, uh, so, so Paulie has said Fat Pizza is on Tuesday at 8.30 p.m., which is Melbourne time on 7, mate. Thank you for that, Paulie. We endorse, here we go, this will ruin the it's, show. We endorse Fat Pizza here on uh, the Wind's Front. Well, it's <laughs> Trans Tasman Talk at my Tuesday night live show with sure. uh, Dewey Deboer, who edits Right Minds uh, New Zealand. That finishes at 8 p.m. Melbourne time. So once you've finished watching Trans Tasman Talk, head over to 7, mate, and watch Fat Pizza. It hasn't Indeed. been cancelled yet, which is great progress. I want to recommend a TV show to everyone here at Wilms Front. I, we've never discussed it before. It's called Mr. In Between. It's um, made by uh, a guy called Scott Ryan, who is a filmmaker from My Melbourne Underground Film Festival. He won uh, Best uh, Film with a film called The Magician about 10 years ago. And uh, he's got a TV show up with Nash Edgerton, Joel Edgerton's brother, and it's on FX. And it's the best Australian TV show that's probably been around this decade. So uh, it's called Mr. In Between. There are two seasons. Um, uh, that you can watch. Um, so get onto it. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, I really love Wentworth as well. I thought that was a very good TV show. But I I've been disappointed in the quality of Australian television. But this is world class. It's like um, as good as Netflix. Or, well, not Netflix. What's the other one? Showtime or um, what's Stan? The Stan's the Australian one. No, what's the one, one that um, uh, the gangster one was on? Netflix. HBO. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. It's HBO quality. It's a very, very good, very good HBO's show. HBO's on Foxtel. In this, Australia. Trust me. This audience here, check out Mister In Between. You'll love it. You don't need to dust off your TV, uh, Stephanie. You just need basically what a tablet or just one of those streaming boxes. That's all you need now. Sure, or you can just go to Pirate Bay and download the fucking thing. Oh, know? that's yeah, that's, a... that's blocked now. You've got to get <laughs> VPN to get around. Oh, if uh, if you want to illegally uh, download things, which I wouldn't recommend, no, I mean you should you know... pay for. Uh, 
Should you? Do you want to give money to globalists who run well, Hollywood? You, you, no, you, I don't. You, you wouldn't like people no, to pirate I, your films. I do. I don't mind it at all. If you, you want to pirate my films, go ahead. Absolutely. Because it's all promotion. I have no problem with that at all. No problem with people pirating my films. Go right ahead. Mm. So the ABC, they said that they've pulled the Q&A program from its platforms while it's under investigation, but there's still clips floating around on the official uh, Q&A Twitter account of promoting... Uh, violence. It's interesting that uh, Mona is now saying this is censorship, even though when she was last on Q&A uh, five years ago, she decried free, uh, uh, def uh, defenders of free speech, saying it's normally by old rich white men who parade under the term libertarian, and it basically means I have the right to be a, a racist and sexist shit. So she's is this, what this bitch said on, on uh, five years ago. She said this uh, five years ago, but she's she's decrying censorship now, even though she uh, poo pooed free speech uh, five years ago, which is that's quite that's quite contradictory. I mean, it's extraordinary the way that the left has become so censorious. I remember a quote from uh, Quanda that just happened, where you know they were talking about you know obviously they were talking about the need for violence, and they talked about you know like you know that they you know that they felt they thought they needed to move beyond essentially controlling people's speech, which in other words means we don't, we don't feel that's enough that we just bully you into saying what we want you to say. We need to actually move on to the stage of violence. I couldn't believe that quote. Like, if any right winger said that, I mean, not even Richard Spencer saying shit like that. Okay, you know what I mean? Like, not even fucking or that the, we know of. That we know of. He, 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 to come. Who cares? Anyway, but like, you know, um, you know, it's just like it's it's extraordinary. They are they are rushing towards the totalitarian side of um of the far left very quickly. And you know, if you don't think things like that can happen. I mean, you know, it can happen. I mean, you just need to look at the disasters of the 20th century and the death toll of communism, which was like, I don't know. I mean, the, the death toll of Nazism is, is you know, people say it's around 6 million and it's like 120 million. I don't know what that's like. It's like 20 or 30 times worse. But they had conferences for Marxism and communism constantly at Melbourne University and Victorian College of the Arts. If you were to hold a Mein Kampf conference, it would be technically on the death toll like less than holding a Marxist conference. It's ridiculous. Um, uh, but I don't know, they can't see this. It's the very disturbing thing about, and Jordan Peterson always made a big point out of it, is left-wing people can't see when they are rushing towards the cliff of their own politics, and they are at the moment, and I, and this is a very good point you were making before about, you know, you do need to condemn this stuff because, you know, it's just really, it leads to a bad place. Uh... YouTube, well, that's their, their actual username. I said, would you guys on go on Q and A if they asked you? I absolutely would, and I've been waiting for the invite, and I've got the Melbourne Underground Film Festival coming up in two weeks. So put me on next week or the week after. That's the perfect timing. If you basically, if you're going to go on it and you're not going to be liked by the audience, you never oh, like you never placate them. You just go all out. Probably the best performance, I think, was earlier in this year by Tina McQueen, who is a uh, federal Liberal Party vice president. She just basically disagreed with all of the consensus of the of the panel. For, for example, no. like she decried the, the banning of Milo uh, from Touring Australia. Said, of course. Like, he's, he's the an best one was Jordan Peterson, without a doubt, because that was the only right wing Quanda show I've ever seen. It was like it was like the left knew they couldn't beat him. Like, they couldn't argue down Jordan Peterson. It was like, finally, it was like a representative of the patriarchy had popped in. And, and they, they, they all listened that night. You know, they were all like, oh, yes, Mr. Jordan Peterson. Because, he, you know, he was, you can't, I mean, at least the left can't, um, um, they can't argue with him. They can't defeat him. Well, he seems to have still not much trouble getting a, a platform, but obviously sure. with your Melbourne Underground Film Festival, you yes, we have breaking news. Yes, we have breaking news. A bit of a snag. Uh, we have breaking news. Uh, Muff, which uh, the posters have been going up around town. Here we go. Um, we were doing the festival uh, at a venue called um, Cracked Actors Theatre, which was on 30 Lakeside Drive, Albert Park. Uh, and um, this week um, we got deplatformed, which you know happens sometimes uh, if you have any connections. To the new right, which is most disappointing because it happened once before. It happened last year, but we had a, a standby venue uh, already. Uh, and um, but this year, um, the venue was very strong in support of standing by the festival. And they said, look, they knew they would get comp the odd complaint, and they would just you know back freedom of speech, etc. But what happened was, is the whoever was complaining went to the owners of the building itself. And then, you know, caused trouble there. And there are also other businesses, I believe, in this building. And they went to them and, you know, just created trouble. Uh, Paul um, Film Co-op has asked a question. Hey, yes. Sir Richard, mm -hmm. uh, 
Or well, is just asking you about what's the content of of Muff? Um, this well, you know, this what was year, so controversial? There wasn't anything particularly controversial. I mean, it was the twenty years of Muff, and obviously we've been you know causing trouble in the local film industry for twenty years. We wanted to celebrate that. We have a lot of new films from local uh, filmmakers like you know James DiMartino and Stu Stanton, and a lot of independent. Not, none of them particularly political in any way or whatever. I mean, these are just. Um, you know, really talented new filmmakers. And that's, I mean, that's what really the Melbourne Underground Film Festival is about. I mean, I, I guess some of the programming decisions might occasionally reflect my politics. But I've all, I mean, as I run a film festival, I'm aware to attempt to keep it vaguely balanced. And I play work from the LBG community or whatever. I play work from all over because I just believe if it's interesting or funny or whatever, it's if you've got some sign of being a bit iconoclastic or um, you know, aggressive or, um, you know, a bit different, I'll, I'll play it. And if the filmmaker seems to have some kind of, you know, um, you know, budding talent, I, I will play and support it. So that's what it's about, and that's what we were doing this year. I didn't put anything particularly controversial. Did you see that Jordan Peterson screening at the Light Lido? That got deplatformed as well. I got that news today on Facebook. So maybe I might try and sneak that in. I might be able to create another session if I can get the Jordan, Jordan Peterson documentary and play that after um, the opening night film. So um, just check uh, muff.com.au. Um, you know, people are going to have to follow the website because um, you know, it'd be very difficult this year. Um, That'll be next. I'll try because to it happened down. at the last minute. Sorry? That'll be next. I'll try to shut down the website. <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know, it's amazing what they can shut down these days. And uh, you know, I mean, it's always got to be remembered. This, this is, um, this is the, the the actions that they are doing. It's something very similar to what someone like Joe McCarthy was doing in the fifties. You know, if you're a communist, he would try and you know, blacklist you or shut you down or get you deplatformed within Hollywood or whatever. Um, you know, and it's the same tactics except they are using it for their own. But you know, they condemn what Joe McCarthy did, and there are many films um, where they condemn that and you know where they defend freedom of speech and yet when they are put in a position of power that it's far worse than i mean joe mccarthy affected i don't know 20 or 30 filmmakers who were blacklisted how many people have been you know destroyed because they said something stupid on facebook or their career has been destroyed or or their event you know whatever i mean there must be thousands of them and that, there's that great um book about it so you've been publicly shamed i read that one year before i my recent <coughs> controversy and um I thought, oh, here we go. And um, when it happened to me, I thought that that book is right. And he stood on the side of, you know, not publicly shaming people, not being so hysterical about this. And you know, the right can do it too. Still, you know, we you know get into a public shaming mode and just, fuck that. You know, like let's just you know, if, if someone says something really um, hate, well, okay, we just live with it. You know what I mean? Like this stupid comment on Quanda. Okay, she said it, and I think it. You know, I think someone like the ABC should really watch having someone on who promotes open violence from the left but like you know she said it okay i mean that is part of left-wing politics let's not kid ourselves i mean you know i grew up in a period where there was the beta meinhof and many um uh, the IR, RAF and many actual left-wing i mean but today's left is nothing like that they're not out with machine i mean that's what the 70s was people were out with machine guns killing people in the streets there were major terrorist attacks from the left None of that happened now. They're all a bunch of pink-haired women on Quanda who, you know, you, you couldn't hurt a latte, they order her. You know what I mean? These people are not a threat to anybody. They are ineffectual. And that is why globalist media are promoting them. They are a distraction. They're not even left anymore. They, it's just, they've used intersectionality and, and um, you know, what's it called? Um, divisive gen identity politics to fuck with everybody and to create a kind of non-politics. And that's what I believe is going on. Uh, Port Film Carp has got another question. Oh, yeah. uh, I've, I've, this is your second uh, free uh, question. I know you're a super chat uh, tipper before, and sure. uh, your questions tonight are quite constructive, unlike the, the other ones. <laughs> so, yes, uh, please uh, share the love tonight. Richard is a true culture warrior. What advice do you have for artists up against the lefty establishment? Well, you know, you don't give in to them. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, it's always disheartening when there's something like deplatformed. I mean, you know, because you, I mean, we'd spent money, we had posters up, it's like, oh, you know, and obviously that it does affect, you know, the ability for you to promote your festival. But, you know, there's a positive side to it too, because um, every time they do that, mainstream media will cover it. I mean, you know, I've already had mainstream media journalists um, cover me, and, and, and I, at the moment, uh, I, I'm rushing to organize a new venue. Um, I do believe I have a strong lead, and that Monday I'll be making announcements on the website. So, you know, um, I do believe we'll have a new venue, and we'll be doing the festival at the same time, but at a new venue. So, you know, um, and we'll have mainstream media news coverage. So I want to thank the people who do platform this because now we're going to have mainstream media coverage thanks to you. And this whole controversy that happened two years ago, 
it tripled the entries. We only ever got five or 600 entries. Now we get 2,000 entries every year, thanks to these idiots. So, I mean, they're essentially our promotions team. I don't have to pay them a cent. You know what I mean? They, they do it for nothing. So please keep at it, um, you know, because we really want the festival to get bigger and to become more promoted. And please try and de-platform us again next week. I and mean, maybe if you succeed, maybe we'll make international press. So this is great. Keep, keep going. I mean, you know, I'm going to have to send them Christmas cards. I don't know where to send it. You mentioned the Hollywood blacklist uh, yes. during the McCarthy era. <laughs> Yes. Which is interesting because now Hollywood wants its own blacklist because uh, Deborah Messing, who uh, she stars as Grace Adler on on Will and Grace, yeah, which was I've never watched that show. Yes, well, it's about a, a gay man living with <coughs> a Jewish woman. No, and that's was, why I haven't watched it. <laughs> well, it was quite successful in the nineties and two thousand. It just sounded but they, shit. They brought it uh, back eleven years uh, later because you know how they're bringing back all the the old shows because the the new ones a lot of them suck. So oh, she's she's back paying uh, Grace Adler, and so she's proposed a a, a new Hollywood uh, blacklist of uh, Trump supporters, and oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Trump called nicknamed her Deborah the Mess Messing. So I think that this new Hollywood uh, blacklist it, it should be called Messingism. I think so. You know, I think you're onto something. Look, you know, there, there are many many people within. Um, film and entertainment who are who are right wing there are many right wing kind of shows i mean if you think about something like breaking bad that's kind of a right wing show if you think about house of cars which is really about the clintons it's a kind of right wing <laughs> or the well in australia it'd be about the turnbulls sure exactly or you know or about um you know exactly um is there, and, and there are many shows um there's another great show called the blacklist um starring james spader which is actually about taking down the globalist cabal each episode is about uh this James Spader character, who's essentially like a, you know, um, you know, like a, a major globalist um, figure, and he's got a blacklist of everyone who's involved in the cabal, and they're all involved in different kinds of criminal conspiracy, almost on an international level. And each episode, they take one down. It's so, de you know, deeply like what's going on right now. And uh, there obviously is a part of, of Hollywood that does occasionally get up these kind of shows, like and. It's funny because these shows are quite popular and and populist, and uh, you know, not everyone within Hollywood, um, you know, obviously, is is part of this. I think there's a kind of interior exile that they don't speak out, and um, you know, many people who are silent on on Trump, you know, who just don't say anything, you know, essentially they're his supporters, you know, and obviously there's a few like John Voight and Clint Eastwood who who are, who are old and established enough that they can speak out, and James Woods, and these guys are great. But, you know, I, I, I know at least 10 of them who I could name right now and destroy their careers forever, but I won't. Because, um, you know, they're on the inside with us, but I just can't say it publicly, you know. And because we live in this 1984 type situation where if they were to speak their mind, their careers would be over. And this is a terrible situation, really, for, even just from an artistic perspective, you want people to be able to say and do what you like. So if you are someone who is right wing, just keep fighting them, keep doing your own thing and being persistent and, uh, and never give up. And when these bars come after you just view them as your publicists because that's what they are they're your publicists and except you don't pay them you know and um you just keep going and going and going and you keep showing their totalitarian nature and how they're trying to shut down a little independent film festival that just wants to help local australian cinema and some cinema from overseas that's independent i mean that's what they're getting up against you know what i mean like this is the great evil you know it's fucking ridiculous now yeah. the reason i decided to have you on a, a friday night is because mm -hmm. of it's the end of the working week it for is. a lot of people mm -hmm. in the old days many used to go to the the movies yes. uh, but these days it's as the the saying goes uh, netflix and and chill uh, well mm -hmm. Uh, we had you here in the the studio. We've been filming a new report from from Tiger Mountains. That's why we're late tonight because yes. we uh, shot a couple. Yes, and I didn't want to shut uh, <laughs> Richard shut me up. up. Yes, no, well, I should shut up sometimes, maybe for my own good. But anyway, yes. Um, you want me to recommend some films? Uh well, I want to just go through what's being uh, been released Can by Hollywood the... recently. Or oh, have you got? You've I got, got one film, The Irishman. I saw it yesterday. Yes, at uh, the first session, the new Martin Scorsese film, which yes. is fantastic. Um, we all know that Robin De Niro is a bit of a Trump hater, but you know he does give a really great performance. Joe Pesci is fantastic. Um, it's just really great. It's you know I think it's his best film since Casino, and you know, obviously when he's making his these gangster films, these films are fantastic. And um, this is a, it almost feels like a career uh, ending. Al, Al Pacino's in it as well. Al Pacino, Jimmy Hoffa. It's yeah. really really good. It's long. It's three and a half hours. So um, but you should go see it at the cinema. It's playing at the Classic in Elstonwick, which is a really nice cinema down there, and you can go see it. But it's playing at a few others. But for some reason, there's some controversy about playing the film. Like I don't know why that's controversial. I mean, you know, he's well, he's one of the great 
filmmakers that's that's alive and he's produced amazing body of work yeah. and he, mean, he's he's always been edgy way back when he course. started in the the early 70s of course the uh, taxi driver which uh yeah. martin scorsese directed and robert de niro mm. uh what was the character's name again travis bickle travis bickle yes written by paul schrader yeah yes. i mean yeah. Uh, well uh, paul that schrader film was blamed for inspiring a real life uh, presidential assassination attempt uh, yeah. John Hinckley Jr. on uh, Ronald Reagan because he wanted to impress uh, Jodie Foster who plays Iris in yes and King of Comedy as well you know it was another um, great film he's made, made many great films uh, Mean Streets and uh, obviously Goodfellas and Casino uh, he's made many great films over the years um Cape Fear but like um yeah. Cape, Cape Fear is the Joker film Casino is one of his the Joker film was deeply one. influenced by um two uh Scorsese films which is uh Taxi Driver, Taxi Driver, and, King Driver and King of Comedy right you know and um you know also Scorsese at the moment has come out and attacked these Marvel films because I I've hated these films as well. I mean, okay, maybe Guardians of the Galaxy isn't so bad because it's a bit cartoonish or whatever. I don't know, but like, I hated them. I, I, I've only seen maybe half of them, but that, I, I really, I, I would take the shit out of me. And when he starts attacking them, I go, that's exactly right. Fuck these films. I mean, if you want to make one, one or two every three years, go ahead, but we, we get like eight a year. It's ridiculous. It, it is. Like, I do commend Marvel and Disney for basically creating, it's, it's basically a film series like serialized yes, it is true. I understand films. that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I've, there's about 20 well, they like of them the out, money. and they've right. done well they've done well to basically well, they, they 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 still get good reviews by the the critics uh they've got the big name actors who sign they up to them. do multiple films films yeah. and all the stories uh converge no, on it, each yeah. other so the marvel cinematic universe it is a great creation and it's, well, I saw that it's, one where there's a guy with the hand what's it called uh it was recent it stars everybody from all of them um i can't remember the name of it, it was like avengers it's the one recently with the there was a guy who wanted to wipe out half of the universe what was that do you watch them i, I, I watched them, watch them sporadic sporadically um end of i don't know i can't remember its name but it was the most one of the most recent um marvel i didn't mind that one it was in two parts it was like part one end end game that's yes. it yeah is there end game or something yeah, i haven't seen end yeah game. yeah no actually i quite like that one um because again, when it was all separated, but when everyone came together, it kind of had kind of an apocalyptic feel, and it had this character who said that we needed to wipe out half of all life in the universe because you know it was kind of like a green globalist message, and um, that was kind of interesting because I thought it was kind of honest about what the globalists are up to, and um, and I don't know, it just the fact that it had everybody in it, it became more interesting, and obviously it took some skill to have like I don't know twenty superheroes running around the film to navigate these narratives. I, I didn't mind that one, um, and I, I didn't mind Guardians of the Galaxy, but no, I much prefer the um, the DC ones. <clears throat> I was a big fan of the, the two Christopher Nolans, the, the Joker one, and my favorite probably of all is the uh, the Bane one, which is almost like a new right kind of film, where Bane takes over, you know, uh, Gotham City, AKA. Is that, is that the, the Dark Knight Rises? Yeah, or... he, he performs a kind of right wing um, French Revolution, and he drags yes. everyone out of the East. I mean, I, I, because I'm, Nolan, he, his films, which is Batman Begins, yeah. and uh the dark knight which he, uh, introduces heath ledger's joker that introduced the joker into hollywood cinema in a more philosophical yeah, exactly. role yeah. and then if you had the dark knight rises which was the final well the dark the knight is a masterpiece i believe you know and it's got that great moment where he works with a kind of globalist guy who's helping him um you know whatever he's up to it's played by ben mendelson he's got that scene when ben mendelson's coming to, i've given you all this money like don't you help me and he says you've got to remember i'm in charge and just does their thing do you feel in charge? Because I think that's what the globalists are going to get. They're going to get Trump is at some stage going to tap them on the shoulder and go, do you feel in charge? You know, really? I mean, because we have, I mean, na nationalists and patriots, we have the army. You know, we have like major institutions that have always been nationalist and patriot. And now sure, the globalists have elements within these institutions that have been sabotaging them, but would not, would only be 10 or 20%. The majority of these institutions would still be authentic and still be fighting for the people's of our countries and you know all we need to do is through something like elite replacement theory is get more of our own good people in there and just you know steer the, steer away from the iceberg steer away from you know back towards saving our countries and nations and you know continuing our hegemony um well into the 21st century i noticed that uh well lucasfilm is now owned by by disney and oh, that's pretty terrible. much They've tried to turn Star Wars into a Marvel Cinematic Universe and they've basically ruined it. They have. They've ruined it and it's a terrible tragedy. And Lucas um, 
did that interview with Charlie Rose where he said he sold Disney to white slavers, which is basically a reference to almost like people Epstein, right? You know what I mean? That's what he's saying there. Right, yeah, and that's incredibly controversial for him Even to say though, that. He said, I sold Disney to white slaves. That's how angry he is. He basically named, you know, he, he well, said the thing you can never say, and, and then he kind of laughed. Like, he knew he wasn't allowed to do that. You know, because, yeah, he, saw, he, he did. Okay? He should have sold it to somebody who would actually look after it. Even though George I, Lucas was warned by South Park, was it nearly 20 years ago now, don't destroy your movies? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, I actually liked the prequels. I really enjoyed the prequels. And I particularly liked the third one he did where um, Darth Sidious takes over. That, that was it Revenge of the Sith. I thought it was brilliant. Um, I really enjoyed the prequels, and I, I'm a fan of the original films. Obviously, I was a kid when they came out. These new films, the first one, I was like, I don't know, I didn't really like it, but I thought, well, if part, if the next one is good, you know, it'll, you know, it'll be okay, and then we'll head into a good third. And the, obviously, everyone agrees the Last Jedi was a gigantic train wreck, and um, you know, I mean, it's, um, it's terrible, terrible. It destroyed everything really, and you know, because I think it destroyed, you know, destroyed the character of Luke Skywalker. You know, who? Why would you do that to Luke Skywalker? Why would you do that to his character? Why would you even, why would you kill off Han Solo before they could hang out? I mean, it doesn't make sense. Like, if you, if you said, okay, I mean, if you could give, like, some of the film students that come to Muff, you're going to make new Star Wars. They would come up with something better than fucking Jar Jar Abrams and that fucking moron Ryan. These people should be banned from ever making a film. They should be sent, you know, into the sun for what they did, you know, like, on a rocket ship. You know, it's terrible, you know what I mean? Like, or sent to Mars, maybe, to live on a, you know, like, a, some, you know, kind of green. It's, 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 it's atrocious. I'm a big fan of the series, and it's just, you know, I, I was seven when the original Star Wars film came. I love that fucking film. And to see this happen, and you, even Mark Hamill's furious, you know, to what they've done to the character of Luke Clark. He goes, my friends are in pain and in danger, and I'm on some fucking island and not even going to help them. He goes, that's not Luke Skywalker, and it isn't. And they, they've deliberate, was, you know, Star Wars was the great myth of our age. You know, it was something, it was kind of like almost a Homeric kind of use of myth. And that's why the globalists bought it. And that's why they destroyed it. Because they wanted to destroy our notion of heroes. And that's what they're doing. And it's absolutely fucking insidiously evil. You know, anyway. Go ahead. Well, obviously we've, we've seen a, another interpretation of the, the DC uh, comics with the, New the Joker. Joker. Yeah. What um, did you think of it, Tim? Oh, it was amazing because oh, I loved it, yeah. it's not often that you get engrossed in a movie like that mm -hmm. because it's not just the the plot but it's also the cinematography the score it's, oh, it it's perfect yeah it's, it's all it's all done perfectly well and i love the fact that it's it's basically an alternate interpretation of the uh, the batman universe if if you can call it that. Because yes, yes, exactly. It basically, because you have uh, Thomas Wayne, who's who's running for for mayor, and mm -hmm. in this movie, uh, Bruce Wayne is is just a, a, kid, a yeah. young boy, and it basically, Tom uh, Thomas Wayne is portrayed as just this uncaring awesome. elite, yeah, exactly. And you have Alfred Pennyworth, who's basically who, who uh, basically is this protector of the the young uh, Bruce Wayne, and well, he doesn't really say much, but he's mm. also portrayed as a, as awesome. a wanker yes yeah you know i mean this is a very interesting take i thought um i think it was one of the most daring superhero films i think made and um i think it's wonderful that it's been received so well um i think joaquin phoenix gave an amazing performance like you know it's extraordinary. Yeah, and todd phillips uh, and I, who uh, never really made that great a film before has made a real kind of art film um superhero film particularly when with all these marvel films being so awful at least some of them and um you know the, the genre had you know definitely been feeling used up and, you know, I thought this new Joker film was really fantastic. And, you know, it did something that they, they always should have done, is to make it real. To make, what if someone was actually, you know, became the Joker? Well, and had it's some providing kind of, the know. backstory. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. Arthur Fleck, uh, obviously, mm. is, uh, he is living and caring for his mother. And yeah. there is a subtle, like, elite uh, cover-up there, because yes. it's, it's never explicitly set, but it's hinted that... Uh, uh, Thomas Wayne uh, mm -hmm. to cover up his uh, affair with uh, Penny Fleck has her institutionalized and make it that Arthur's adopted and that that's what the the institution records say yes which yes. basically hints that hey this is happening in real life with certain elites of course, like yes, Thomas yes. Wayne who run for public office 
Exactly, yeah. I mean, you know, I thought it was very uh, red-pilled, that film. And obviously, you know, the elite um, media um, were hysterical about it when it was going to come out mm. because, I don't know, they must have seen an early uh, copy of it or something and, and go, oh, my God, this is really against us, isn't it? Yes, it is against you. And it was tremendously successful. This is the kind of yeah. populist... Um, you know, like awakening that we want, where everyone is into it, everyone gets it. And you know, there are times like this, for example, the Epstein thing, everyone knows Epstein didn't commit suicide, you know what I mean? Like everybody, all my left wing friends, even the far left, okay, yeah, he didn't kill himself. Even the social justice warriors, no. They don't like to talk about that topic because they know it opens a whole can of worms that they don't want to look at. Because if they were to look at it, they would all be here on this show, they would all throw their new left politics to the wind and all be here on this show, um, probably storming um, parliament or something. They don't want to look at that because they know what's going on. In the back of their minds, they know. And they know that they're like, no, no, I can't, I can't look at that. Because if they acknowledge it, their whole political... Um, What's it called? Their rose tinted glasses will just collapse when they see, you know, how our politicians are manipulated through these kind of blackmail um, things. It's just, it's, uh, and the whole vast evil of it all would, would just freak them out because they're so e empathetic. They can't look at it in a way, but they know at some level. Go ahead. Well, it's close to making a billion dollars at the box office oh. now, the Joker movie, which yeah. is uh, amazing. The, the, the budget that it was was made from was only 70 million which yeah. for for hollywood Very cheap. is yeah it's a, it's a decent for, a Holly, for a, like a superhero film price tag and mm. that's despite all of these uh, columns from the guardian condemning the it yeah. Post, yes so saying don't see this movie and i spoke about because i did my joker review yes, last friday mean? night and i bought my tickets i saw uh, that on facebook from, yeah. just uh, from a well, she, she was just a normal a uh, usher yeah. who, I, who I bought it from this this young girl and she said how amazing the the movie was and yeah. that's what really scares them that a normie just a, a normal girl working at the box office yes. is mesmerized yeah. by this movie when of course they're all telling her like this movie is going to inspire men to kill you that's what they tried to say to no 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 like I her. mean you know it's it's really um it's a really very powerful film about somebody who you know goes through a series of um trials and it's kind of driven kind of crazy um by the kind of world he lives in and his reaction is almost justified you know what i mean like and you certainly is sympathetic and the fact that you could make um the story of the joker appear that way i think it's a really amazing film and uh, obviously i think joe quinn phoenix will be nominated for an oscar not that the oscars are really that important anymore but occasionally they might actually give it to somebody who might deserve it and um you know i think a lot of people in hollywood including british and ellis have you know been touting him for uh, to win best actor and i think it's a really great film and yeah it's just crossed boundaries and this is why i detest um many people on the new right who, who, who want to drag things off to the daily storm end of things. We have, you know, complete, we have like actual electoral 50 or 60% of the, the population who can potentially agree with us. And if you want to drag things off to the, to the, to the you know, you're an idiot because, you know, we would like to actually maintain power because if we wish to defeat the kind of, you know, cultural um, revolution that the left is um, daily inflicting upon us, we are going to need to, um, you know, win back our power and present a, a more reasoned and um, centrist view of the new right, but is that it's, that's still, you know, um, interested in, in, in radical change and redirection, you know, that actually continues to strengthen our nations and our populations and our jobs. And, you know, while also in our own way, we can look after foreigners in their own countries by, you know, things like debt relief from the IMF and rebuilding these countries and, you know, setting our actual systems of democracy and, and justice and, you know, things, you know, I mean, there's so much we could do in foreign countries to help foreign people that would much more than actually bringing whoever however many we can let into our countries which is just a disaster for everybody you know because you can just see what's happening it's not working out for anybody well they were also triggered by the the latest uh, rambo uh movie which of course is divester oh, he, he writes directs acts in it i mean he's he's mocked quite a bit for how he speaks and that but he no. he's a, he, he's a He's a jack of all trades, uh, Hollywood uh, personality, and so Rambo, Last Last Blood, it's he's now uh, controlling the the southern border, and of course, or yeah. you're you're putting Mexicans in a negative light, a pro Trump no, no. Uh, national security message. I was surprised at how good that film was. Obviously, I'm a fan of the Rambo series, but not the last couple of Rambo's weren't that great. I thought, and I didn't really expect a lot from this film, and I was. I thought it was an amazingly powerful piece of cinema. And I think that 
we got to remember that Sylvester Stallone is an actual independent filmmaker, you know, who actually had something to say. Mm. And I felt with this new one, he was saying it again. And he very cleverly brought in the issue of human trafficking and its abuse of women by Mexican cartels, which really taps into the whole. I mean, you want to talk about something like the Me Too movement? How about human trafficking? I mean, not, not I don't know, the fact that you're getting groped by Harvey Weinstein when you happen to be in the room with him. You know what I mean? Like, maybe you don't go into a fucking room with the bastard if he has that reputation. You know what I mean? Like, you know, what about being human trafficked? Think about the evil of that. And they leave the you know, the whole feminism. They like they leave alone the issue of human trafficking and child human trafficking, which is way more problematic than than some touchy feely Hollywood producer, which obviously should still be condemned as well. Um, you know, like I detest Harvey Weinstein, but like you know, there's much more going on. And I thought that film really nailed it, and it showed that the actual new right is the protector of this issue, and not this new fake new left politics, which, as we always say, is a distraction. It's um you know, an appropriation of something so that it becomes ineffectual. Um, because, you know, Hollywood elites are all up to the mischief that they're up to. Kevin Spacey recently got off and his accuser died. Okay, just let that sink in. Okay, like, you know, he got off with it. He did that weird video where he threatened people. He had that cup. On what? that cup was a picture of, like, was it, Prince was, Andrew. Was this it was the a one? reference to Prince Andrew. Because I think He was making a direct threat. He's saying, okay, if I go down, you're all going down. And this is the problem the cabal has. All these people, they all know who else is guilty. So if any one of them goes down... They can name names. They can give up the, the everyone else. So the cabal has to protect them. But that's also why the cabal is in a bad position. Um, you know, because someone like Epstein, sorry, no, sorry, Weinstein, he has to get off. Because think about it. If, if, if Weinstein goes to jail for 30 years, he, it's the rest of his life, um, he will name everybody you know, and say, let me out of jail, right? So and, and he would have already recorded the names and have put it into like a lawyer's account. You know, so the, he will get off as well. Well, he was spotted at an actors' yeah. hour uh, event in New York, which is that was it's a it's a long-standing uh, like support group for for young uh, actors, yeah, and he was he's there the brow with still. his uh, posse or his security and a couple. Yeah, of yeah. yeah. And he's still up to no good, don't worry. Yeah, an actress, uh, Zoe uh, Stuckless, she when she got up to speak, she uh, obviously condemned him, said, "I'm not going to be in the same room as him." Like, mm. what? Uh, why why, is why are you there? all there yeah. yeah and she was heckled and and booted out which of course is a is a badge of of honor but it just shows how they tried to sneak him uh back in and of course under the, the radar yeah. the man who who broke the the weinstein story in the new yorker ronan farrow has got a new book out uh, catch and kill lies spies and a conspiracy to protect uh, predators which is a bit of a, a play on uh, one of weinstein's famous uh, films sex lies and videotape yes yes because uh, he worked for nbc they refused to air the story mm -hmm. which of course we saw amy rober uh, abc news in the united states didn't want to air the epstein interview with yeah. um look you know i mean when, when you want to see a, a feminist like that woman uh who stood up to harvey weinstein and said this fucking guy is a rapist cunt and i do believe he is He's, he wasn't just using the casting couch which is a different level you know, it's a much milder level he was raping people like asia argento etc cetera, etc cetera. i am totally on her side and i, I would love to have walked up to harvey weinstein and punched the motherfucker in the face okay i'll advocate violence i mean i don't really but like I could understand that as a reaction from somebody well, who went out what, with. Uh, well, that's what Mona said this week. I mean, if she's if she she advocated violence against. No, I don't advocate violence. But like you know, in the sense you know, if some if your girlfriend had been you know attacked, if you were the the boyfriend of one of the actresses he'd uh, he'd assaulted or whatever, you know, you could understand that reaction from a male perspective. Um, you know, like anyway, this guy is a prick. What's he doing? Calling around some like what was it like young actress? Yeah, it's actors like hour. You know the whole point. And see, Harvey Weinstein wanted to make a statement with that: is I will keep doing what I want to do. You can't touch me. That's the whole point about this elite: is that they will keep doing what they're doing regardless of whether they're caught. And um, you know this is really extraordinary level of flaunting their own power and um, their own um, degeneracy. Well, part of the reason that Ronan Farrow is alleged why NBC wouldn't. Uh, air at is because uh, the the host of NBC today, which is their their big breakfast yeah. program, there Matt Lara, he for of decades course. had uh, had uh, allegations of sexual misconduct no, no. Ag against him. You got to remember, they are all like that. That's why they work there. Okay, every single one, Stephen Colbert, all these, they are all sex criminals, and that's the reason they have the job because they are blackmailable. Then they have to continue every night going on and saying what they've been told to say. If they weren't. 
You know what I mean? They wouldn't be on. That, and that's why you find so many people like that within the industry, right? Because they only employ people like that who they've found have some flaw that they can blackmail or some problem or something um, uh, that makes them, you know, unless they are totally working with them or, or and occasionally maybe someone, you know, someone like um, Kenu Reeves or whatever, who seems like a nice guy. Occasionally someone who's actually just a nice person makes it into Hollywood and you have good people like Clint Eastwood and John Voight and, and James Wood and stuff like that. But like, you know, it's extraordinary, um, you know, extraordinary what's going on. And, um, you know, I, I mean, this level of, 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 uh, of, of evil is really off the charts. And, uh, you know, it's really being exposed to everybody. And this is, I think, why... This movement is, is way more popular than people realize, you know, because it's, 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 everyone can see it now, don't you think? Yes, well, there, we've just scratched the surface, of that's course. the thing, the, because this is the way the elites and the media work, they offer mm. a few sacrificial lambs, obviously. Exactly, yeah. Well, Weinstein, they, they couldn't, well, once he was revealed, they, they shut down yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the Weinstein company, yeah, yeah. and of course, Kevin Spacey with another uh sacrificial lamb and let's not forget uh in the obviously there's been a lot of uh, scrutiny on prince andrew's relationship with jeffrey epstein what about uh, jimmy savile remember he he died an an innocent and free man mm -hmm. even though basically he had uh, hundreds endless, of accusations endless yeah. access no, to this young is, this girls has been going on for abuse. years like you know this this kid's this kind of um and it's not just jeffrey jeffrey epstein is just one operative so to speak this is a way that the cabal has been owning it and our politicians probably since world war ii and before world war ii even so you know this has been going on for a long long time and uh um the very fact that someone like trump i mean so, you know, when the whole epstein case broke you know they tried to link epstein to trump and they did know each other a little bit and obviously trump had kicked him out of mar-a-lago and things but now trump is the person behind exposing it that's why it is being exposed only because he is president um so that's you know he doesn't like that. I mean, you know, Trump would like a, a party full of hookers who are all, you know, in their mid-20s or whatever. Trump will probably be into that. But he's not into whatever was going on at, at Epstein Island. And um, good on him for not liking that. And, and now he's the president and he can do something about it. And he's and obviously, yeah, he's made a big thing about shutting down human trafficking and shutting down these kind of things. And, you know, with Nexium and um, a whole number of different um, examples of this stuff going on in media. And, and um, you know, it's the, you know, and this is why Hollywood is so hysterical, because so many of them, I don't, I don't know what the percentage would be, but it's got to be somewhere like half of them, have a lot of skeletons in the closet, you know, and, um, you know, I, and it's, it's terrible, you know, and, uh, you know, we do need to fight it, and um, Hollywood needs an enema, because I remember after Weinstein and um, they had that Golden Globes where Oprah got up and said, oh, it wasn't wonderful, it's all fine. And then one of them said, like, look, half the audience is still guilty, which is exactly true. You yeah, know how, I mean? yeah, how dare you lecture us about oh. uh, treating women with respect. I know. Trump that... said pussy and, uh, and everyone else went to Epstein Island. I think we'll stay with Trump saying the word pussy when he was in private to, in, with, doing locker room talk than whatever was going on in fucking Epstein Island. It's unbelievable, mate. And did you see the way that, um, you know, uh, the whole Epstein thing, the woman who was the whistleblower, um, at was it is it ABC? They 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 sacked her. You know what I mean? Like they are still covering it up, I, and it's it's well known. It's been reported in mainstream news press that this has happened. It was on Yahoo or something. Like they, the woman that revealed that they had all the information with Epstein, linking it to even Bill Clinton, the Clintons, um, and that they had it ready to go years ago, but uh, the ABC shut it down. Not the Australian ABC, the American ABC. Yes, and. Uh, and they shut it down. And what did they do to her when she revealed that? They sacked her. But I thought they were all about well, whistleblowers it now. It was a leaked tape of Amy Roback. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Yes. And people have pointed out that she wasn't she wasn't worried about that he'd abused all these young girls. That damn, I missed the story. Mm -hmm. That was that. It was just about oh, we got scooped. That's all yeah. she cared about. Which which was quite revealing. It's like damn it, like we could have. Had the oh, is that why she was complaining? Well, that's what most people have interpreted as. She wasn't like, you know, we let this guy continue to yeah, get well, away with things. She should realise who she works for. She works for the very people in league with... Mm. Um, as this. I said on the Uncuckables last night, uh, who's the, the ABC America political editor? Who? Uh, George Stephanopoulos. And who <laughs> did he used to work for? The Clintons. There you go. I mean, uh, so, you know... Uh, in a uh, media advisory role in the 90s. It's amazing. Why, I mean, you know, and all this has been, you know, like, was something that was exposed by many people who are into conspiracy stuff. But, like, I mean, Alex Jones had constantly been saying a lot of this stuff. And it's all turned out true. And now he's been moved and deplatformed and blah, blah, blah. You know, like, it's extraordinary what's going on. I mean, the amount of stuff that appears to have been a conspiracy that's ended up true, 
you know, I mean, obviously there is some stuff to do with conspiracies that isn't true and that we must be careful um, not to always follow every, um, you know, what's it called, rabbit hole mm. in conspiracies and go, you know, what's it called, full, full tinfoil hat. But so many um, conspiracy things do turn out to be true that you have to at least give them a listen, you know, and... Um, like the fact that we all... When Epstein got arrested, we were like, oh, he'll probably be suicided. Yeah, and, and then he was, mm. yeah. I mean, yeah, and the other thing that's really upsetting to me right now is Julian Assange, who was a former hero of the left, but because he kind of technically supported Trump by revealing um, um, Hillary's emails, um, has almost been deserted by him. And uh, recently, I think it's George Christensen. Well, they and, say that he's a rapist now. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, like, you know. Well, he didn't have he, sex he with had, a condom. That's what he's been he accused of. Consensual sex with two um, uh, Swedish women who are clearly um, sent by the cabal to then make some false accusation to cause this exact, um, what's it called, um, um, thing where you um, can make tar someone with the wrong brush or whatever. Mm. And then he spent, what, how many years in that embassy? He spent, uh, like, he's a political prisoner. And now they've got him locked up in jail. I don't know what for. I mean, you know, if there's some crime in Sweden, why isn't he there defending it? There's not even talk of him going to Sweden anymore. They're going to send him to America. And obviously his health is failing and oh, it's terrible. Two Australian politicians, I can't remember, I think it's George Christensen and someone else, um, want to go and see um, uh, Julian Assange. And I believe they're heading to the UK to do that. And um, Assange welcomes them. So we, you know, Scott Morrison could rescue um, Julian Assange if he applied political pressure. And why isn't he? You know, why wouldn't he? He is probably the, one of the most heroic Australians in in my lifetime and i don't always agree with all of his politics but like man that fucking guy is brave why are we not there i mean why are we on the new right the people defending him where are the left-wing people like you know he, he he took down bush and you know revealed a lot of bullshit about the iraq war and where are you now where are you exactly. and he's in jail dying like you know and they're like a oh, horse racing like fuck off there with your bullshit politics let's have a a discussion about one of the latest box office uh, bombs because there's been a lot of criticism of what's termed woke cinema. Uh, they, they were making a well, they've now released a sequel to uh, to Terminator. I haven't seen this uh, yet. I, I've been too busy. I'm going to go see it on Sunday night. But um, yeah, I heard it's bombed. That might mean it's probably good. Even I mean, though it's got all the original yeah, actors man. back, uh, Schwarzenegger. I think the last few Terminator films were terrible and. You know, maybe it's just uh, well, they've poisoned the well in relation to the series. I think the new one looks okay. I'll give it a go. Um, I, I was never particularly excited about it. Obviously, The Irishman was the one I really wanted to see, The Joker, and um, you know, there's a few other good things still coming. Yes, yeah. yeah, so uh, Dark Fate, it, it obviously has uh, Sarah Connor uh, back. Yeah. Who Have you seen it? Uh, no, I haven't. Linda, Linda Hamilton, and they, they even get uh, the original uh, John Connor back who played it in... Uh, Terminator uh, 2, but uh, basically, I, I saw one of the YouTubers uh, review it, and it's basically because it, his interpretation is because it's all female girl empowerment, and oh, that the, the girls need to need to take over from the the men. And James Cameron, he didn't direct it; he was the producer of it. He uh, directed the the original two ones, but his uh, film Avatar uh, that had a hidden. Uh, political message as well yes you know look I, I don't know about this new Terminator I don't know much about it I do think you know I mean I, I will go see it um, I'm a fan of the first two Terminator films um, you know I mean sometimes you know some of these fanboy films are, are, you know I can suffer from I guess uh, fatigue sometimes in relation to these endless sequels and I like to see a, an original piece of work sometimes but like you know I'll check it out and um, there's a sequel to um the Shining, which Doctor Sleep, which I think I'll check that out as well. Oh, um, so you know, well, there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting films. Hollywood still does some interesting films, uh, surprisingly. I mean, and it's, not everyone's um, terrible. So you know, obviously, we just need to clean house. Like we do need to clean house at the ABC. There are probably a lot of good people at the ABC, technical people and stuff, who would like to see a balanced ABC. This is not like. You know, we need to turn the ABC into like, you know, a non-stop Andrew Bolt show. I mean, let's just have one or two conservative shows and, you know, I don't know, have a few more conservatives who actually are conservative on Quanda. I mean, if you're going to have a bunch of rap bags like that feminist thing, get someone like Jordan Peterson or you know, whoever on to at least, you know, balance the pot because he would he would have he would have gone through the roof if he was on that show. And the other thing that Hollywood's been accused of recently is uh, caving in for hating rogue states, such as there was the the, the infamous uh, uh, hack on on Sony uh, Pictures when they were releasing uh, the the interview 
in 2014, mm. the uh, uh, James Franco's yeah, Zeth, that, Zeth, yeah. Zeth Rogen uh, film, because obviously uh, you, you're not supposed to mock the, the dear leader. And yeah, then yeah. They, in response, a lot of other studios cancelled their uh, North Korea critical films. And then there was the South Park episode recently, which exposed how a lot of Hollywood uh, scripts are rewritten, so they're in no way critical of the Chinese Oh, yeah. Party. See, again, this is the way the globalists are in league with China, and they are. Because if they aim to destroy Western civilization, I mean, who are they going to work with? They can't just destroy it and then just think, oh, well, okay, what are we doing now? They have a plan, and that's to work with China after we're gone. But just think about what that would involve and how many people would be fucked up or, or dead or, or whatever if Western civilization to collapse. I mean, it would be, you know, it, it would make the 20th century look like a cakewalk. I don't think we want to go down that road. And now is the time to turn back, ladies and gentlemen. Now is the time to talk to people, have discussions, chill out, um, find middle ground. I mean, you know, even if it's fucking boring centrism sometimes between uh, two of the poles, because we're heading towards a cliff and I'd avoid it if, if I was you. Yes. <laughs> that's a good <laughs> way to end it, eh? Well, I'd say that's common sense advice, yes. but we're not living in the, no. the common sense. I know, we're in the common sense age. I know we aren't. We're in the post common sense age. And I switch, I, I look at Facebook and it's like something like, I think laughter. They wanted to ban clapping. I think it's somewhere like some American university. Because yes. it was somehow a, jazz, a hands. jazz hands. So I hope you like the show. I mean, you, this is no longer allowed. I mean, hmm. I, I think, is it the onion? You know what I mean? And you have to check. Is it the onion? Well, no, it, uh, it's the Babylon B. Oh, is it the Babylon B? Yes. Yeah. Because, because people are, it's it's so close to reality now. That's yeah. why Snopes, the fact checker, has gone after it because yeah, yeah. it's it's too close to reality. And as we're knowing now, because the expression used to be that if you thought something absurd, you watched too many movies. Yeah, but yeah. in fact... Now we know that uh, reality is way stranger and more sinister than fiction. No, we really do. And, like, you know, we're living in very strange times. It feels like we're living in an alternate universe. We've uh, crossed over into the Mandela effect or something. And, like, you know, what's going on? Like, you know, we need to re-guide, um, I mean, all our civilizations. And really a balance between all civilizations, between Western civilization, Russia, China, and other powers in the world. I mean, you know, that's better for everybody. You know, I mean, and you also wonder because we've seen all these uh, conspiracy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. movies. You wonder if they were actually subliminal messages by the filmmakers were. that of this is what. Of course they were. It was like that show. I don't watch it, but it's the one where um, it's made by that guy Seth Rogen. Was like it had some kid running through a room going, "I just escaped from Kevin Spacey's dungeon." It's like oh, that was family hello, guy. Family yes. guy, right? Yeah. Okay, so that guy knew what was going Seth on. Seth MacFarlane. Seth MacFarlane knew what was going on and messaged it out um, because he's on our side, okay? Mm. Seth MacFarlane's okay. That's what it means. And that also project, uh, predicted Family Guy, uh, Bruce Jenner's uh, transition to Caitlyn Jenner. Sure, and there's a lot of other stuff that happened on that Family Guy show where he was signaling out um, things. So there's a lot of people like Seth MacFarlane. They're on our side, you know, and we must, you know, make this new politics something they can embrace publicly. Because at the moment, they can't embrace it publicly because there are too many rat bags who want to maybe want to drag it off to the, the deep ends of the pit, so to speak. So, you know, like, we can take over with this politics. I remember when Brexit and um, Trump won, I, I did a podcast and I said, we basically just took over the universe. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, in the two major elections in the two most important Western countries. Now, there's obviously been a huge amount of... Um, behind the scenes panic since then but you know and there's been some, maybe we've even lost some ground but we you know this is a this is a wave ladies and gentlemen and the first wave that hit of brexit and, that's wave one because there's a tidal wave coming take the white pill as uh, nick uh, fentes has yeah, been be well, he hasn't been saying that to us he well he himself is making a lot of people uh take the white pill so yeah let's take the white pill what is the white pill white pill it's it positive. means that uh, you're optimistic yeah, about fucking nice. you've been red pilled, but you're optimistic yeah, that of you can turn as the totally opposite win. of the black pill. I mean, really, you know, how do you think we're going to go on a battle against the women who are on um, Quanda? On, uh, on, well, are they yeah. really a threat to anybody? Uh, no, Mona no, no, no. claims that it's hilarious was... that the globalists are that pathetic that they're, they're using them as puppets. It's like, grow up, you know, globalist. What are you doing? You don't know what you're doing. If you think those people are your puppets, I mean, you're pathetic. Huh.
You know. And as I mentioned, we've been producing more reports from Tiger Mountain, so stay tuned for those. We are. Some more coming in up. There the next week. We've both been pretty exhausted Ugh, today. I'm but, exhausted today. But yeah, we did a pretty high energy I'm, show, I think. I think so. High energy show. And uh, um, I believe uh, we have good news coming up for the Melbourne Underground Film Festival that will keep mm-hmm. the festival happening on those dates. So check out muff.com.au. And please, patriots and nationals, get up there and support us. We need your help this year because we're fighting the power you know, within the arts scene. All right? And I'll be at uh, Monday uh, morning. Uh, at the the county uh, court, uh, Blair Cottrell's uh, appeal yeah. uh, trial against his his blasphemy uh, conviction under What's Victoria's that? racial and religious tolerance Ugh. act, there for beheading uh, that uh, that uh, uh, dummy. Because when they were protesting the Bestigo Mosque, they, they they said that uh, uh, this is uh, in other parts of the world, this is what Islam uh, practices. Yeah, so, so they're they're letting back in the wives of. ISIS are people, but then Blair, Blair Cottrell's a problem. No, Blair Cottrell's not a problem. He is just a patriot, and he might be a little bit more radical than some of us, and he has the right to freedom of speech, and they're leaving the hell alone. So it will be it will be quite telling about, uh, because the first trial was supposed to take place in, in August, but then uh, the judge in that case got a promotion, and so the, the new trial is, is now this Monday, the 11th of uh, November, so... Ridiculous. We, we shall... Uh, it'll be... Hope for a good result. Yes. We, 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 we shall see uh, how it uh, how it plays out and yes uh, it obviously there is a lot of uh, patriots and nationalists who are going to uh, uh, support him we shall see if the mainstream media are, are interested yes in uh, well are you know, they always um, you know um, portray that guy I mean I, I met him at a couple of functions I spoke to him he seemed like a reasonable guy and mm. you could definitely have him on you could have him on Quanda he'd be probably less radical than the, those silly bitches they just well, had the, on the, I mean the, 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 you know, the, the, he has said a few things that are maybe you know but you know I spoke to him and I said you know I, I just said I gave him the advice you should just be a little bit more centrist and just say my older opinions my older opinions and uh, I, I think he understood that perspective and I don't know I mean um, he's his own man and I think he's a strong um figure and um you know to me he reminds me of an australian tommy robinson um you know you should get into politics well we'll wrap this up uh, let's now. do it i gotta get going yep and uh well i can't end a wilms front show without uh all the all the reminders of course uh, the report from tiger mountain is still on the the unshackled uh main uh channel yes and so is uh trans tasman talk uh, which yes. i referenced before that's live every uh tuesday at 7 p.m melbourne time on the unshackled's youtube channel of course if you want to see well your wilms front is exclusively live yeah. to the tim wilms uh, youtube channel so if you haven't yet please subscribe yeah. click the bell to allow notifications please uh uh, give a thumbs up, comment below, and uh, share because we want to. The break, Unshackled is taking over, ladies and gentlemen. the algorithm. This is the Australian Breitbart, okay? It's just in its infancy stage, though. Within two years, we'll be in some gigantic building in, on, in St Kilda Road, hopefully. And we've got a lot of fans of uh, Steel Archer, uh, my colleague at the yes. Unshackled, his detonation program, which had, I think, about three live shows today. He, he has a more sporadic uh, broadcasting schedule. But I like Steel Archer. Most, sure most uh, week weekday mornings uh, it's on the dedicated detonation channel now yes and he also has his own website steelarcher.com mm-hmm, mm-hmm. wilms front of course has its own website timwilms.com where you can check out the archive of episode we've reached milestone episode number uh 20 uh tonight uh so we're already uh churning uh through them and of course it has links to, to my social media and uh this uh, show available in podcast uh, form as well I will aim to the media see, blitz. I will see if I can do an, a, a Sunday night show this week. But as I mentioned, I'll be at the the County Court on Monday. Get morning. a stable table. It's... You're not supposed that's to give the, that away. That's in the that's in the budget. The... Yeah, and of course, uh, the Australian uh, alt media primetime lineup resumes Monday night with XYZ uh, Live at uh, nine PM on the Maddie Rose Live YouTube channel. Make sure you check out Maddie's. Uh, uh, vlog channel, Maddie's Modern Life, and of course James Fox Higgins, his Rational Rise uh, channel, and of course it all accumulates uh, at the on the Thursday uh, with the Uncuckables live uh, 8:30 p.m. 
uh, Melbourne Time on its dedicated YouTube channel. It has its own dedicated website mm. as well, uh, which is theuncuckables.com. Mm. I will definitely uh, have a Wilms front uh, 7 p.m. on uh, Wednesday, and then after that will be Dear Beltran's weekly live stream, which is moving to 8.30 well, p.m. She's on Facebook uh, Melbourne there. Time, because I did uh, go over into her show uh, last week because there was just so much to cover in the, the, the Groper wars but the griper uh, the griper war began yeah, so, it's, it's like the clone war so uh, so I'll, I'll be able to have a bit uh extra 15 minutes uh leeway to if i have a he's got 15 if, minutes up his sleeve yes if, if it happens to be an epic uh show on a wednesday night then i can go for a bit longer and all of the the viewers of australian art media they can still watch my yep. show and then go and watch uh dia's Patriots, uh, we're going to win. Show. V for victory. Of right? course, make sure you support uh, the work of uh, The Unshackled. We have our premium me membership program on the website, theunshackled.net slash membership. Mm -hmm. Also, our web donation form, theunshackled.net slash donate. We're also on Patreon, subscribe to our PayPal, and Wilms Front will soon be on Rational Rise uh, TV, which, of course, was set up by James Fox Higgins, but it's going to host all of our uh, content, including uh, the Dusty Bogan, and uh, I believe Australian uh, Meditations. And of course, um, uh, please uh, visit uh, theunshackled.net because we've got uh, a few uh, new regular writers. So we are producing daily articles as, as we used to. And uh, of course, sign up to our newsletter and get your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net. Enjoy your weekend. We shall fun, guys. see you uh, next week. Stay strong. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.